We're joined now by Frank Inouye, the managing director of Azipak, which is a new company, fairly new company. Can you tell us uh, about this company and why you found the need to create a new oil and gas exploration company? Uh, certainly, Katie. Um, Azipak is actually a subsidiary of a larger entity uh, called Azimuth. And Azimuth was created two or three years ago by a private equity group, Seacrest Capital, based in Bermuda. And the original investment thesis, which continues today, is that Azimuth and all of the subsidiaries, including Azipak, are focused, are focused strictly on offshore oil exploration. And we think there's an opportunity there in terms of developing uh, and leveraging off of a worldwide database that one of our partners within the Azimuth holding company provides. We feel that there's a opportunity right now, despite the, the uh, oil price predicament that we're in right now, but we still feel there's a great opportunity to, to develop global exploration portfolios. So you're focusing on offshore, and can you tell us what areas you're looking at? Certainly, yeah. So the, por so the portfolio from two years ago, when it was originally started, our portfolio now consists of approximately 51 licenses in five core areas that we've developed. Uh, the UK North Sea, the Norwegian North Sea, is probably one of our biggest areas in terms of exposure to exploration opportunities. Uh, we are currently the largest offshore acreage holder in Namibia, which is our West African entity, ASI NAM. Uh, ASI PAC, as you mentioned, is a relatively newcomer. We started ASI PAC last year, just over a year ago, and we're now busy accumulating or acquiring and looking at uh, building the portfolio out through here. So currently we have interest in Vietnam and Indonesia. And the fourth ASI company that we have is the Brazilian Latin American company, which is it's actually even earlier days for those guys than it is for us here at ASI Pack. So we've got one license offshore Brazil uh, in that entity. Okay. Since we're here in Singapore, I just want to focus a little bit on your Asian uh, sure. yeah. uh, activities. Um, some of your um, projects are pretty close to some areas that have been in dispute. The, the waters have been disputed, the, the, you know, it's all about the mineral rights and what's underneath those waters. Right. So how are you um, working around that and how are you trying to avoid getting involved in any geopolitical issues? Yeah, well I think you, uh, you kind of hit the nail on the head that we're trying to not necessarily avoid them. I think with the, uh, um, first and foremost with ASIPAC and all the ASI companies, uh, we're looking at the data. The data is really driving where we end up looking for opportunities. Uh, the only mitigating factor besides the data opportunities that we look at are the political issues. So I think if you, you know, if we were to rate the issues that would cause us concern outside of the technical issues, for example, uh, getting involved in any sort of political disputes, getting involved in uh, regimes that have questionable FCPA practices, for example, are certainly very high on our list in terms of areas that we would tend to shy away from, regardless of how technically attractive they may look from a geological point of view. Um, so, uh, of these projects that are you're launching in Asia, where are they in terms of development? I mean, are you uh, close to striking something, do you think? Or are you just in, in the very beginnings of, of drilling? Where are you in the, in the timeline? We're still uh, at the sort of very beginning, really, Katie. I mentioned ASIPAC is still quite young, so we've been looking for opportunities for just under 10 months or so. And even when the oil price was still relatively high, there were a lot of opportunities. And it takes a while, it takes a long time to do proper due diligence, technical due diligence on opportunities. I mentioned earlier that part of our, an integral part of our strategy is letting the data that we have through our joint ventures provide us with the opportunity to look and focus on specific areas. And you know, in Indonesia, for example, we have access to a database which is, includes over 63,000 kilometers of seismic data. So it takes a while to, for our guys to actually review all that data, identify the areas technically that we find attractive, and then drill a little deeper, so to speak, in terms of identifying who has the opportunities, how we actually uh, acquire interest in those opportunities. So it's very early days. I would love to say we're, we're just about there in terms of making the big discovery, but I think that's probably 12 or 18 months away. What, uh, and obviously the big discussion here is money, price, the price of oil. Uh, how is that impacting your decisions to um, explore, where you explore, yeah. how much um, investment you put into these areas? Yeah. That's a good question. I, th you know, I think the conference today, just about every speaker out there, including myself this afternoon, will reference the oil price conundrum that we're in. And the fortunate thing for Azimu, Azipak is as be because of our strategy is so focused on offshore exploration, 
I feel we, we have the protection against the oil price and the fluctuations that a lot of producing or development companies are facing right now. So our investment strategy, because we're a private group, our investment strategy is, is very focused in terms of becoming asset managers, not building oil companies here. So we have a timeline. We have a timeline that's aligned with our investors in terms of building the portfolios around the globe, uh, evaluating those portfolios, creating value in those portfolios, and then basically divesting those portfolios. And our strategy ends after the discoveries are made. So the development costs, the logistics, the, you know, the effects of oil price on a development really uh, don't fit within the scope of our strategy. What is the benefit uh, for you to be here at this kind of conference? Where Are you looking for partners, for collaboration? What do you want to get out of this? Yes, we're always looking for partners. And I think these forums, especially uh, in situations where the oil price is the topic of the day, I think they're great forums to not only talk to potential investors who are aligned with our strategy, but more importantly, look for the opportunities. There's a, a lot of opportunities, especially in our space, Katie. You know, when the oil price starts dripping down, and there's panic that seeps to creep into the sector. The first parts of the entire industry, uh, in terms of phasing, exploration, development, production, the first part that always gets lopped off the budgets is the higher risk exploration. So, you know, the majority of people out there are talking doom and gloom for us. We think it's a great buying opportunity. We've heard that, that there's some uh, some bargain hunting, some <laughs> op maybe not, you know, uh, bottom of the barrel type of thing, you know, but some opportunities out there now. And this, for sure. And so this could change some things a little yes, bit. Yes, for sure. Um, you know, I, one of the uh, quotes that I, I think best describes our strategy is a Warren Buffett quote where he said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. And I think we, we follow that mantra, hopefully we can follow that mantra uh, while the buying opportunities are still there. Have you heard anything from some of the speakers today that uh, maybe give you some new ideas about what's going on or some um, more optimistic um, points of view than we, we might expect? I, that's a very good question. I would hope that I would have heard more optimism within the sector. But I think if you look at these cycles that the oil price goes through, Katie, I think the doom and gloom you know, is a precursor to the reasonable um, calmness that should set in. I think you know, there is talk even this week about the possible bottoming, bottoming out of the oil price. You know, last week we were still wondering if it was going to get to $20 a barrel. So I'd like to hear a little bit of more optimism, but again, it's kind of a two-edged sword for us. If I hear too much optimism, I get worried that our opportunity here, when people are still panicking, you know, the opportunities that we will look at, that we can leverage because we have the capital in place and because we're focused on exploration. If I hear too much optimism, I get a little bit concerned that we're going to get more competition in the space that we're actually playing. What, looking forward to 2015, where are you personally going to be spending most of your time? Where do you expect to be uh, really making some progress in 2015? Right. Uh, our core areas right now, for ASIPAC in particular, uh, we have uh, what, what we leave are the foundations in Indonesia. And I know there's been some talk, uh, certainly this morning, about the tough physical regimes. Uh, in Indonesia, arguably, is one of the tougher physical regimes. But we still believe it's a very oily it's, uh, area in terms of where opportunities for exploration lie. So besides spending a lot of time on airplanes, I'll be spending quite a bit of time in Indonesia. The other opportunities that we see are in Vietnam, the ASEAN countries as well. We still think there's a lot of opportunity there for specifically for what we're looking to pull into the strategy. Are you seeing some old friends here at the conference? Y you know, the funny thing, I've been working in Asia on and off, Katie, for the last 32 years. And it's nice to see new faces. It's also nice to see the old faces. It's nice to see people that I met 25 years ago, you know, still actively interested in the region. I think once you spend enough time in Asia, y you develop a relationship with not only the people, but the cultures here. And it's really something that once you're away from that, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's something that people who are used to that really kind of miss. So. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoy, you know, whether I've been back in Asia now with three different companies, essentially three different companies, and it's always been an opportunity for me to, as you say, come back and get reacquainted with old friends, uh, get reacquainted with some of the local foods and some of the cultural things, which is really special. You keep getting pulled back in. I do, yeah, and, and it's certainly, uh, it's not that hard of a task to pull me back to Asia at all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. We've been speaking with Frank Inouye, the Managing Director of Aussie Park.